Urmărim chiar acum un excepțional documentar marca The Economist, celebra publicație britanică, spune cu argumente serioase că viața noastră nu va mai fi la fel odată cu apariția coronavirusului și cu această pandemie. E un material care pe mine m-a cucerit, sper să vă cucerească și pe dumneavoastră. Priviți cu atenție! The COVID-19 pandemic has transformed all our lives. Lockdowns have forced us to change how we socialize, how we shop, how we work. But as vaccination rates rise, parts of the world are opening up. It's a wonderful feeling to go back to a festival like this again. But which changes are temporary and what's transformed for good? To answer that question, The Economist has crunched data to create a groundbreaking new index. The amazing thing about this pandemic compared with all previous pandemics is the amount of data we have. The results show that the world is never going to be the same again. This is not the first time a pandemic has changed the world. Historically, crises revolutionized societies fueling technological advances and kick-starting social change. In the 14th century, the Black Death plagued Europe. Back then, lockdowns were brutal. Infected people were locked up in confined spaces to die. And there were different approaches to social distancing. About a third of Europe's population died from the plague. But from the devastation came innovation. Having fewer workers encouraged the development of new technologies. Labour was much more scarce, and so and that, some historians think, led to the development of labour-saving devices, such as the printing press, because, you know, you don't want to be paying scribes to copy things out. You'd rather have a machine that could do it more cheaply. Some theories even suggest the Black Death made Europeans more adventurous. Piling onto a ship seemed less risky when so many people were dying at home. In the following decades, dozens of expeditions explored new lands. Fast forward a few centuries and the flu pandemic of 1918 looked surprisingly similar to what we've experienced recently. Schools, theatres and businesses were shuttered. There were mask mandates and anti-mask protests. Up to 100 million people died from the flu. That's more than triple the number that died in another crisis you might be more familiar with, the First World War. The flu hit as the war was ending, and both ignited change. Uh, if you look at the First World War, the men went to the front, and so women had to work in factories and, and took on a lot of jobs that they'd previously not been able to do. So it had a big impact on, you know, how people saw the equality of the sexes and whether it was appropriate for women to work and so forth. And after the pandemic ended, businesses were inspired to take more risks. From 1919, the number of startups in America boomed. We can notice these historical changes in hindsight. Today, it's possible to quantify change as it's happening. The amazing thing about this pandemic compared with all previous pandemics is the amount of data we have. I mean, the fact that we're all walking around with these computers in our pocket, you've just got that sensor network that's sort of inherently there. We've got an unprecedented amount of data and, in fact, you know, almost more than we can, we can deal with. An ideal situation for a data journalist like James. He's crunched the data to create an index for normality. So the index that I've made basically looks at, at 50 countries, at, at behavior in, in those 50 countries around the world. And the idea behind it is to track how things are, have, have changed during the pandemic and how behavior might persist um, beyond the pandemic. To make his index, James analyzed eight different indicators of behavior, which can be split into three categories. The first is transport, flight data, public transport usage, and traffic congestion. The next is leisure use, sports attendance, box office takings, and time spent outside the home. Last, how business is being done, office occupancy and retail footfall. That gave James thousands of data points to analyze. Based on all this data, we arrive at a baseline for what global normality looks like, where 100 reflects normality 
zero means that there's no activity at all, and a value of over 100 means that activity is occurring in greater levels than occurred before the pandemic. This line is our overall global normality index. It reflects in aggregate how behavior has changed over the past 18 months around the world. We looked at 50 countries in total, and every country looks a little bit different. For example, here is the chart for Britain. You can see that activity fell dramatically last spring as restrictions came in. Activity rose once more through the summer before falling as the second wave occurred. And since then, activity has risen as the vaccination program has gotten underway. To see how the index looks in your country, click on the link. Data are great at giving a sense of what the world looks like now. But the index can't predict the future. Tom, the economist's resident future gazer, is trying to. The world before the pandemic is gone. We're not going back to it. The big question is to what extent are things going to snap back? We're not going to snap back all the way. It's clear that people aren't going to go on doing all of the things they've been doing in the pandemic, but nor are they going to go back to the way things were before. So the answer is going to be somewhere in the middle. And exactly where it is in the middle is going to vary by country, by activity, by industry, by household. And so that's what makes it so unpredictable. So we're entering into a hybrid world where people do things online as well as off. This has been a pretty big change for most people, but especially for Italians, specifically how they shop. One of my favourite examples concerns e-commerce in Italy. So Italians were not big shoppers online before the pandemic. They like to buy things in person. It's a very social experience to go shopping in Italy. During the pandemic, it was a different story. Restrictions here were tough, and in the first half of 2020, more than 2 million Italians tried online shopping for the first time ever. Today, despite restrictions being lifted, the amount of people shopping in person in Italy is still below pre-pandemic levels. There are all these stories of Italian grannies sort of getting addicted to Amazon and realising they can buy things with a few clicks and then buying all sorts of stuff. That's an example of how, you know, when you discover a new way of doing things during the pandemic, you're likely to want to go on doing it. Amazon is betting on the fact that they will keep doing it. It's hiring thousands of new employees in Italy. But our new online lifestyle goes way beyond shopping. Possibly one of the biggest long-term changes from the pandemic is going to be more people working from home. Our index shows that office occupancy is rising, but it probably won't ever rise to pre-pandemic levels. Companies will probably let people work from home or the office. I quite like working from home. One of the things I like the most is not having to put on a shirt and a, and a suit to go to the office. I can just put on a shirt when I need to. Right now, for example, I'm wearing shorts and I've got sandals on. Tom is very modern, wearing his shorts for work. But it's not just about new trends. We've also rediscovered some old ones. Well, there's one case where, rather than sort of being accelerated into the future by the pandemic, we've gone back into the past, and that's with drive-ins or drive-throughs. The number of drive-in cinemas across Britain has exploded from three to 40 during the pandemic. And it's not just the UK. Walmart car parks, um, many of which may have been drive-ins in the first place, got repurposed as drive-ins during 2020. There was a nightclub in Germany that did a sort of drive-in night. So we've had this sort of return to the drive-through, back to the 1950s vibe, um, even as in other respects we're being accelerated into the 2030s. But we will only know the full impact of the pandemic once it's over. And that could be a long way off until you've got really, really widespread coverage with vaccines that are really, really good at handling these variants, then um, we're not going to see the back of this pandemic. But using data to chart the changes we're all living through helps us make sense of it all. It's been really good to see people's rise in interest in numbers. It's the first time that I've seen charts on the, like, the headline 10 o'clock news on the BBC or ITV. We're sort of adding to that flood of data with this normality tracker, but you know, it is a, a tracker that's showing how things are getting better rather than a, a thing that lets you obsess on how things are getting worse. Nu știu dacă suntem pregătiți pentru o viață altfel decât a fost până la debutul pandemiei, dar asta este realitatea. Luăm publicitate, ne întoarcem imediat.